What's up my friends? I'm Miss K, your dedicated tourist guide, and today I'll be showing you how to journal. And I apologize for my bootleg wall in the back. It is not intended to be a backdrop. It's just trying to keep the heat at bay. Um, and it does kind of work, so there's that. So just ignore that for now. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn notifications on so that you don't miss an opportunity to create the life that you want to live in. How to journal. Journaling can take serious discipline if you're a busybody, but it is super important for your day-to-day -day life because it organizes your money, social life, emotions, and goals. For most people, I feel like you truly don't know what's going on unless you see it written down on paper and have it visually in front of you. Personally, I like using bullet journals because it gives me a sandbox to design, doodle, and write. This one I got from Michaels and this one I got online, I forget the name, but they're pretty easy to come by, so make sure whichever one you pick it suits you and you feel comfortable with it. I'm a stationary fanatic, so a good pen that writes nice in my preference is a must. I always have some type of ruler or protractor for straight lines, although I admit that I don't use it often enough. A pencil for draft doodling and a nice chunky eraser for max erasing. I also like colored pencils in my notebooks because it adds flavor and doesn't bleed through the pages, but you can literally go anywhere with this. Stickers, collages, dried flowers, etc. Use mediums you enjoy, but I do encourage trying to step out of your comfort zone because it will boost your confidence and creativity. So there's a number of things that you can put in your bullet journal, but I love starting out with a landing page that is literally just my name. The next page I find important is a little about me page that shows blurbs about your life. You can lay this out however you need to, but I tend to Google for inspiration. I always do everything in pencil first, and then I go over it in pen and erase the pencil marks because I hate making mistakes and having to cover it up or rip the page out. Another important thing that I think everybody should do is make a birthday page to remind yourselves of important dates. If you want, make a bucket list. Personally, I find my bucket lists ugly, but you know, I tried. Now I'm emphasizing that the key to a successful journal is your calendar. I always give each month a grid layout of the days and write important reminders like bills, birthdays, events, work schedules, appointments, etc. You can get lengthy if you want, but you'll probably need to extend your calendar space. Then close by my calendar is my detrimental habit, which is bill organizing. I lay out my bills by due date on the calendar and then I list them on another page and separate them between paydays so I know the total of what I need to have set aside. That way, I don't overspend and I can plan my budget accordingly for plans or savings. I cannot tell you enough how much my debt has gone down just by simply doing this. This page was way more full with cards than it is now. And oh, I also indicate which are automatic payments so that I know which are not. And sometimes I write the remaining balance just to see where I'm at. I would also do mood journaling, which was detrimental to document for me because I suffer from bipolar too. So when I was figuring out my meds and trying them for the first time after years of not being medicated, I could concretely keep track of how it was affecting me and found the right balance along the way. These I like to get creative with and do cute drawings to color in so that it's not so plain, but you can do whatever. That can also be done for habit tracking, especially for people like me who forget when the last time I watered the plants was or cleaned the litter box or looked through expiration dates in the fridge. So if you give yourself tidy chore lists each day in a layout like this, it will definitely boost production. One thing that I love doing is reflecting on who and what I'm grateful for. I usually do this near November, but this way it captures where I'm at in life and who is in it as well. It's never a bad time to be appreciative of the little things in life. That also leads to one of my favorite things to journal is this here where I remind myself what makes me happy. I had a happy journal I would write in so that when I was depressed, I could look through it and remind myself of what I love and what I'm good at, but I didn't look at it as often as I should have, so I implemented it in here. And if you don't keep secrets in your journal, it'd be a really good idea to share this with uh, someone close to you so that they can know how to cheer you up or at least try. Other ideas could be to set out goals or wishes for the following month and then reflect on how it went at the end, but I tend not to be so good at this stuff, although I did try. And then the other topic that is key to journaling is obviously daily journaling. Even if it's not something long, you can just say today I did X, Y, Z. I tend to not dedicate pages to this because if I did a page per day, my journal would fill up fast, but excerpts of a summary of my day or a quote or something keeps you on track. 
I do advise, however, and please take this into consideration, try not to write when you're upset about why you're upset. I can't tell you how good I am at writing when I'm upset, but when I look back, all I see is how my life sucks and it makes me more upset versus seeing what my life has to offer. If you need to do this, try to keep a separate journal for this so you can burn it later and get all your feelings out and try to keep your daily journal more lighthearted so that it's not so dark. That doesn't mean that you need to pretend or mask your feelings, just trust me. If you're afraid people will read it, you should keep those thoughts separate because keeping this daily journal on you is more practical. Keep your poems here, your ideas, your knowledge, and whatever else that comes to mind. I'm always Pinteresting things to spark my ideas for bullet journaling, and instead of using stickers, I like doodling things I googled how to draw because it makes me proud and makes the journal nicer to look at. Aesthetic is definitely key in these things because you want to write in the journal. Of course, like many others, I get lazy and forget to journal. It really does take discipline and some days you really may not be in the mood. But if you think of it in a way that is you are making time for yourself, it gets easier. Think of it like taking your medication or birth control and set a time to journal real quick in the morning, at night, or both. Take your journal with you if you can so you can journal if you're waiting in line or riding along in the car. Truly, there is no right or wrong way to journal, and as a beginner, just focus on staying consistent. If you don't want the overwhelming organization junk, stick to making your calendar and organizing your bills. When you get into that habit, add some more features to your journal. I found my first bullet journal to be rocky and somewhat ugly, so my second is a better hope for aesthetic, but like I said, there is no right or wrong way to do things as long as it works. I hope this gives you some insight into why journaling is important and how to do it. Next week, we'll be talking about tarot cards, what they are, and how to use them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I will see you next week.